whole uh, slideshow because we don't have time for that. Let me see. Um, but this is from uh, one of our uh, contacts of the Scottish National Party. I asked him to put together something that would kind of give us a sense of what their journey was like, and then there'll be some parallels. Um, I think the most important aspect of this slide is the first paragraph. This will not be an easy or a quick campaign. And I think one of the hardest struggles I've had with really excited volunteers is they want really rapid progress. And that's just not something that is going to be something we can just manufacture. Um, and actually, I need to have someone take photos of this for me for my friend. Can you use this phone? And just take photos? Appreciate it. All right. So everyone needs to be ready for a long struggle. That's point number one. Um, They've been going at it for 313 years. That's how long Scotland, people in Scotland have been seeking independence. And they are very far along. They control their regional parliament. They have a lot of good stuff going on, but they're not yet independent. So obviously we hope to greatly compress this, let's say by a factor of 10, but that's still 31 years. Um, so just always keep in mind the length of struggle we're gonna deal with. Uh, the SNP itself was formed in 1934. And again, think about that in terms of scale. And I'm going to be breezing through a lot of these. Uh, 1997 was a big moment um, because you have the New Labor Party. They created a devolution. And so that gave the SNP a platform. They could take over their devolved uh, Scottish Parliament. And that, that's something they've leveraged uh, to their own purposes. So they kind of had their first great success in 2007. They'd had people before that. Just take pictures, like, a lot. Okay. So what are their policies? Um, an independent Scotland within the European Union, uh, creation of a new currency, uh, social security system that's more generous than the UK system, more pragmatic and progressive. Uh, they want to get rid of their nuclear deterrent, free university. Uh, they want to protect their national health service. Honestly, these things are really similar to our own policies. And that's not a coincidence because, uh, you know, the California National Party was founded soon after the Scottish independence referendum and we were greatly inspired by their example. Uh, but if you look at these things, these are very similar to our proposals, though ours are more tailored to our unique culture and society. This is how they organize. Um, so you have various uh, ways that the, their party's broken up. I'm just going to skip some stuff here. You'll get to see this again at the uh, CMP convention, probably in longer, longer form. Getting back to what our uh, friends from Cascadia were talking about, you have affiliated organizations, uh, an inclusive branch, um, something for younger people. We've been trying to do this in the CNP as well. Uh, right after 2016, we had a, a great array of things, but some of that has kind of slacked off a little bit. We're kind of in a hibernation period, and I hope with um, the Democratic Convention coming up, we have another opportunity for growth. And I think that the challenge for our movement this time as compared to 2016, is we have a lot more infrastructure, we have a lot more uh, leadership, we have a lot more people ready to take on people. So I encourage every organization, when the Democratic Convention wraps, half the people who go to that convention are going to be really pissed off. And so that's an opportunity for us to collect a whole bunch of Democrats, whichever side they're on, whoever wins or loses. And then the next opportunity is the national election, and that's going to be especially if Trump wins, which is certainly not something I'm looking forward to. But if that happens, we're going to have a huge opportunity. The last time that happened, my phone was ringing off the hook. And that was when the CNP was like a year old. So just keep in mind, we need to get ready for these opportunities.
This is an example of one of their uh, election leaflets. And it also reminds me, our, our friend is in East Lothian. Somebody was asking me that. So anyway. Uh, you know, it connects it to the National Party. It's got his specific things oriented to his specific constituency. Stalls are something we have done um, in the CNP. I skipped to the stuff that we don't really have infrastructure for right now. Essentially, and any organization can do this. You can do it at a farmer's market. You can do it at a flea market. Uh, you can do it at a mall if you get permission. Like, there are various places you can set up a booth. And, and spread the message, whatever your organization is. This is how they do it. Ours look pretty similar. We've got these Free the Bear signs, and it's somewhat modeled on their strategies, honestly. OK, social media. This is what I wanted to focus on, because we can actually do this. So it's a good campaign tool, but it can't be the whole strategy. And that's what we're building towards. Uh, right now, we have very limited bandwidth. We're an all-volunteer organization. And that means that, it, you know, A, you've got to get, you don't just have to find someone who will do it. You've got to find someone who's really passionate about the project or it won't move forward. So you really have to, like, the challenge for our leadership is you have to find someone who loves the idea of doing the project. And that's great when it's shaking hands and meeting people and, and standing up in front of a crowd and speaking, it's really hard when it's data entry. It's really hard when it's, uh, you know, spreadsheets and the, the nuts and bolts stuff. Usually our top leadership has to do that stuff because you can't get anyone else to do it. Only the people who are most invested will do the boring things with no uh, publicity. So social media tips for your pages, try and have people from different backgrounds. Never use the first person. Try and really make your messaging interesting, fun, and exciting. Keep the post relevant to your movement. Um, as our Cascadia friend said, you know, keep it positive. Keep it about us, not about the people who are failing us thousands of miles away. Um, don't do more than three or four posts a day. Try and time your posts to when people will look. So right when they're getting to work, right when they get off at lunch, at the end of work or in the evening. We need more video content. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel. We don't have enough content for it. If, if you get content that is uh, uh, you know, similar to our messages, similar to our goals, talk to us. Maybe we can throw it up on our YouTube channel. And we can try and do some, let's try and look at how we can do some kind of cross messaging across our different organizations, because then it opens up way more content for us. Uh, one thing we can look at is how are independent countries of similar size. So economically, we'd be like the UK. So we can say, you know, look how the UK can do this. Look how the UK can do that. Their economy is actually a little smaller than ours. Um, in terms of population, you know, 40 million is actually really big. Um, so, so we can really demonstrate how independent countries have a lot more freedom, a lot more prosperity, a lot more happiness than we do stuck under the boot of D.C., Though obviously focus on the positive message, not the boot. <laughs> Be careful about copyright. You know, I don't want you calling me and saying, hey, somebody's sending me a cease and desist letter. Um, try and get public domain stuff. If you do have copyright problems, I'm an attorney. Give me a call. We'll figure it out. We'll solve the problem. These are some examples of uh, good social media posts. Nicola Sturgeon, so our equivalent to that maybe would be like Shankar or something, um, somebody who's very charismatic, who's very, you know, um, good at, at uh, pushing our message forward. Um, and then, you know, how to, how to kind of frame things in a way that will be appealing, will pull. I mean, our biggest challenge is we have to get people to – have more confidence, faith, and love for California than they do for America. And we're dealing with people who have been indoctrinated their entire lives with how fantastic America is. Now, fortunately, all of that are you know, incredible lies. So once you kind of give people the blue pill, then they're ready to understand that California is actually vastly better than the entire rest of the United States combined. I mean, I'm a little partial. But... Uh, <laughs>
Okay, some final words on campaigning. How are we doing on time? We're doing, we're doing okay. So, and this is more, even more true for us. Uh, unpaid volunteers are our entire staff. That's everyone. Um, we, have to, we have to properly support people. What people want is, honestly, what they really want is something they can do from their, the safety of their computer in five minutes. So any, any task you can break down into that kind of chunks, we can get done pretty easily. The more someone has to go to a place and do a thing, the harder and harder it gets to get people to do it. But, you know, there's a, you know, five to 10% of the organization will do that. Um, so it's kind of figuring out how do you break things down and then how do you give people enough tasks? Because if you don't, if somebody's volunteering and you're not giving enough to do, enough to do they'll wander off. So just keep that in mind because I know you're all volunteer organizations too. Uh, our, the language has to be very professional. We also need to look at how to get away from only English. We need more Spanish. Uh, we need more Mandarin. We need more Tagalog. You know, we need to move into these other languages that cover our nation, because our nation has many languages, which is one of our challenges. Always be trying to think of new things to do. I've really been impressed with Yes California's capacity to generate media by always come up with new and novel things. I think that's something that other organizations can learn from. Never take supporters for granted. I think the Democrats are really starting to do that here in California. So that's a great opportunity for us. Yeah. And all politics is local. Um, if, you really, if you really want to change a political paradigm, only ho hard work from you can make that happen. There's no easy road. There's no shortcut. We need to organize. We need to build campaigns. We need to become more than just uh, you know, a debate society, more than just people who dream of a better world. We have to put in the hard work to actually make that better world occur. And we can do that because the California people are innovative, they're dynamic, they're creative. All we have to do is harness that power and we can change the world. Let's get to work. That's it.